Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the 11th episode of the series of program Organization and Management which is an MBA course of MBA Coal. I'm your host Komal and with me I have the expert Mr. Sey Chaudhary. Sir, welcome. Thank you. In today's program we are going to discuss organizational culture but before going to today's program we will first have a review of what we studied in the last lecture organizational environment. Sir, will we have a review of it please? Of course, here is the review, organizational environment, forces in organizational environment, industry life cycle, the general environment, managing the organizational environment, organizational structure, reducing environmental impact, change as a two-way process. To further proceed, organizational environment is basically those forces outside its boundaries that can impact it. Forces can change over time and are made up of opportunities and threats. Opportunities are openings for managers to enhance revenues or open new markets, new technologies, new markets and ideas. Threats, on the other hand, are issues that can harm an organization like economic recessions and oil shortages. Managers must seek opportunities and avoid threats. And now an overview of today's topic, organizational culture and control. Now coming to today's topic, the determinants of organizational culture. Sir, I gather there are determinants of organizational culture that we can see here. Strategy, structure, support mechanisms, behavior that encourages innovation and open communication. Sir, will you be kind enough to elaborate? Now, strategy is concerned with the envisioning the future of your business and value creation for customers and managing business in the long term. Structure, on the other hand, is the organizational structure which we have already studied in detail but here we may mention that it may be flat or linear or it may be vertical and uh, structure is actually the perspective in which the business works. So we have to have a structure for small business, for medium sized business, for big business also and support mechanisms as you know, there is managerial support, there is peer support, there is uh, state support, and there is uh, ergonomic support and uh, support of uh, laws and rules and regulations. So these are various supports which work for uh, the business and in which the business has to work with the help of these. Behavior that encourages innovation means that uh, in organizational culture, there are various attitudes of managers. Some are more open-minded and more open to suggestions and hence more open to innovation. And some are not that open. So it's a part of organizational culture whether the managers will welcome new ideas and innovations and suggestions from their subordinates or uh, sometimes they are not. So this is also a, an important part of modern uh, organizational culture. Open communication, as we can guess from the words, is uh, about the communication in the organization. Communication is said to be lifeblood of any organization. And here it means that it also contains a system of reporting and hence a system of control through reporting. And the communication is always two ways, as we know, from up downward or from down upward. These are the determinants of culture 
and from here we can move on to dimensions of culture. Sir, you said that communication is a two-way process from up downward and from downward up. Will you be kind enough to further elaborate what are the dimensions of organization culture? Yes, dimensions as we have seen are attention to detail. Now this dimension is whether the organization has such a culture that people attend to major and minor aspects and they look at the business in totality and uh, outcome orientation is also a dimension which means that uh, there are certain organizations and managements which concentrate more on processes and there are others which concentrate on outcome or output which means the product or the service. In a way we can say that this relates to the philosophy of means and ends. Mm -hmm. The processes are the means mm -hmm. while the product or the service for which we are running the business is the end. Mm -hmm. People orientation means that whether the management has such a culture that uh, they while making decisions think of whether this how will it affect the uh, the workers in the organization and uh, some organizations have such a culture that while making decisions they would not bother about how these decisions relate to mm -hmm. the employees sir is people orientation something similar to the kind of orientation students get on the first day of their universities not exactly okay Actually, students are introduced to the university and here the employees are already there. They know the organization. What we mean here is whether the organization is oriented to its employees. That is, when they take decisions, whether they are considerate of their employees and their workers. and. Uh, Aggressiveness here means there are organizations in which the salespeople, particularly the people in the market, are aggressive, outgoing, mm -hmm. and they are always after achieving. So th this is uh, aggressiveness. Mm -hmm. In some organizations, the workers are uh, docile, submissive, not outgoing, and hence not aggressive. So this is also a part of culture which has been encouraged among the employees by the management. Stability here means that we have organizations, culture, in which they are more prone to status quo. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are organizations which perhaps would not bother to take risk to make big decisions and hence they are not seemingly much for stability they are for change and development innovation and risk taking also is a part of culture a dimension because in organizations where there is a culture of inviting new ideas they are open to new ideas and suggestions from the workers, from first line managers, from supervisors. And there are organizations uh, where these are not encouraged. So innovation means being open to new suggestions, new ideas and changes, which also means taking risks. Yes. Otherwise, if we do not entertain new ideas and we want status quo and we continue with whatever we are doing, that means no risk taking. When we talk about risk, sir, I gather that there should be some monitoring involved in it. Now, coming to monitoring and control, managers must monitor and evaluate. Are we efficiently converting inputs into outputs? must accurately measure units of inputs and outputs. 
Furthermore, they should know, is product quality improving? Are we competitive with other firms? Are employees responsive to customers? Customer service is increasingly important when we talk about monitoring and control. Are our managers innovative in outlook? And does the control system encourage risk taking? Monitoring is not only required in uh, uh, risk taking matters or uh, in uh, innovation. Monitoring is uh, an essential part of any organization because it tells us what is happening and it's a uh, forerunner of control because there cannot be any control without monitoring. Here, by monitoring, we mean whether we are looking at whatever is happening, how our costs are going, whether we are achieving our targets according to our time, and whether we are giving the same quality which is required so it means that we have to measure first the time, the cost, and the quality, which we also call performance. So the managers have to be uh, all the time measuring the time and the cost and the quality. It means the monitoring and control are two parts of the same system which we can broadly call control system in an organization. Now let us see how they are parts of the same system. Control system whereas are monitoring, formal target setting, evaluation and feedback systems to provide managers with information to determine if strategy and structure are working effectively and efficiently. Viewers, a good control system should be flexible so managers can respond as needed, provide accurate information about the organization, and provide information in a timely manner. Sir, will you please further elaborate? As uh, we have seen, we need to have timely information, we need to have accurate information, and we need to have information we require. So it means that we must first decide what to monitor, how to monitor, and in which terms to monitor. You see, we have uh, measures for everything. We have measures for time, we have measures for cost, and we have measures for performance and quality, which are a bit difficult to measure. But here, we must note that first of all, we must know what to measure. And uh, we must have standards for measuring these. We must have characteristics in our mind which we are going to measure, whether of the product or the service. And uh, we have to know what are our objectives, objectives of the organization, and uh, how many of these are being achieved how many are not, where we are lacking. So in monitoring, the problem is to set standards and to select the characteristics that we want to measure and the matrix in which to measure. Because in certain cases, it is difficult to uh, 